Um, as you all know, my name is Professor E.N. Cyclopedia. Welcome to this week's TV Library. Today, we are going to be talking about the Electrophoros and the inventors behind it. For those of you that do not know, an Electrophoros is an electrostatic generator based on induction. To put it even more simply, it's a generator for electrical sparks. But before we get into the ins and outs of how this device works, let's put it into its historical context by learning about the great inventors who created it. In 1761, the Swedish researcher Wilkie was the first to describe a resin cake that can be used for producing electrical charges, leading to the electrophorus, the invention that we speak of. That we can see in this image. However, Wilkie is not very well known for the research he did. And it was not until the Italian inventor Alessandro Volta came along that this design became well known. By the way, it is not clear whether Volta was familiar with Wilkie's work before, so we really cannot say. But anyway, let's begin by learning a little bit more about Wilkie. Wilkie's father, Samuel Wilkie, was a clerical man. He educated the children of F.A. Apinus, a professor of theology at the University of Rostock. Wilkie was educated at the German school of his father's church. In 1750, he entered the University of Uppsala to prepare for the ministry, but not to study theology, but rather mathematics and physics. And 20 years later, in 1770, Wilkie began a professorship in experimental physics at the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences. It was there that Wilkie began his journey in becoming distinguished in I love the measurement and the exactness and the reproducibility of results. Exactness, I say. Exactly. It is exact. This is what is important. Exactness! Exactly! It is exactly what I say! With his exact nature, he went to Berlin and became devoted to the study of physics. He paid particular attention to the contrary electricity with his friend, Franz Apinus. He described the exact ingredients of what makes up the electrophoros. The instrument consists of a resin cake which is then placed inside a bowl that has a metallic bottom. At the beginning of the experiment, the electrophoros is rubbed and charges are separated. A metallic plate which is suspended from insulating fibers is placed on the resin cake and it is grounded. When the grounding is removed, the metal plate is lifted and the experimenter can draw a spark from it. That is exactly how he described it. This procedure can be repeated for almost forever. Well, actually, for a day or so without having to rub the resin cake again. Hey, I thought he was supposed to be exact. Anyway. This ability to produce sparks without having to recharge it again was the reason why the next scientist, Volta, named the instrument Electrophoro Perpetuo, which translated means Permanent Electricity Producer or a generator for electricity that does not need recharging. So now we know a bit about the device itself and the background around the first inventor associated with it. Let's look at the second inventor who became well known for this device. His name, as we've already mentioned, was Alessandro Volta. 
Volta was passionate about electricity. In fact, he was so passionate about electricity that one day he announced to his parents, I am not going to university. I will now devote my life to the phenomena of electricity. He said adamantly and his parents were shocked. What? This is just a typical of you, isn't it, Alessandro? Well, I am not surprised. This was nothing new to Alexandro's family. As a child, he had not learned to speak until the age of four. They even feared that he may have been brain damaged. But perhaps it was during these silent times that he began to grow his unique perception of the world. When he did finally speak, his development was very fast. So fast that he quickly outsmarted all of his school friends. It became clear to his father that he had underestimated his son. He admitted, We had a jewel in the house and we did not know it. A jewel he most certainly was. At the early age of 18, young Volta launched himself into a scientific career by writing to the leading scientists of the day about his ideas. And what was surprising was that they replied. I am only 24 and I have already written my first book, a book about the theory of electricity. Now I shall invent a way of creating an endless supply of electricity. One that is portable too. He said proudly, Well, no one has ever done that before. We have large electrical machines. They work by one insulating material rubbing over the other insulating material, which creates sparks. How can this be improved? questioned the other scientists. Well, he had a different idea. He thought that perhaps he could use an electrically charged material. This can push charge into a conductor instead of having it rub off. So this became his obsession to create the ultimate charge producing material. He asked his assistant Polonio to heat a mixture of turpentine, resin and wax. Then pour it into a metal shallow pan to cool. We shall call it the cake. We then rub this cake with an insulating material. Something like fur of fox or fur of tiger, some sort of uh, fur. After that we put on a cover made of wood with rounded edges with tin foil on the top. Then on the wooden cover we attach a glass insulated handle. Oh, wow, that's amazing! What shall we call it? His assistant said. We shall name the new device the Perpetual Electrophoros. <gasps> wow! Uh, now what? His assistant asked. Now, for the moment we have been waiting for. He slowly lifted the cover with its glass insulated handle and a big explosion happened. Sparks hit his hands as he got electrocuted. Whoa! Oh, whoa! Then he bravely got back up and tried it again. And he got electrocuted again! His face was black and his hair stood on end like this. It's <laughs> and he fainted from the shock. Well, we don't know that he actually got electrocuted. But we can imagine it all the same. Now I should be able to produce any amount of charge. When he finally came back around, his assistant said, How did you do it? 
Uh, well, uh, just like my father said, I am a rare jewel. News spread about Volta's invention fast. And it was not long before he became famous throughout Europe. He wrote letters describing the device to other important scientists and even sent models of it as gifts to the very important people. Despite this fame, the device was not without controversy and mystery and many scientists from Italy and Germany questioned it. However, it did not serve as the endless source of electricity that he had visualised. It was not until later in his life that he created the miraculous construction of the electrical battery. Out of all of his inventions, this was by far the greatest. The greatest. So much so that even the greatest emperor, Napoleon himself, wanted to meet him. He thought so highly of him that even after two years after meeting him, he was still talking about him. It has been said that once when he was on an official visit to the National Library, he looked at an inscription that was dedicated to the famous French writer. Look at this memorial for the great Voltaire. Then in front of everyone, he chipped off the last three letters and laughed. Not anymore, it will now read as the great Volta. <laughs> that he got the hiccups. <laughs> well, we don't actually know that, but he probably got the hiccups. Anyway, I digress. The point is, he was very proud of his inventions, and rightly so. The end.